All of you are so near and dear to my heart. Um, first of all, what the Israel Heritage Foundation does, God bless you as a journalist. I am covering so much every day. I mean, I'm thinking about today. We, uh, I was talking to Rudy Giuliani a few minutes ago, who's in Ohio at the train derailment. I was talking to General Jack Keane about what's going on in Ukraine. Um, and the list goes on and on. And it is such a difficult time in the world. And it is such a tenuous time in the world. And the importance of having a democratic and an incredible leader in the world like Israel in that part of the world, I feel like now more than ever, is so pivotal. Um, so I am so, so supportive of Israel and so supportive of the mission of this foundation. Um, I just want to say, Dr. Frager, I love you. Rabbi Katz, I love you. Dr. Stephen Soloway, I love you too. So I see so many old friends here um, in the place. Um, and very briefly, I'm going to thank you. I'm just going to tell you very briefly um, a little bit about my history and why this means so much for me to be here. My father, I'm Polish Catholic. As many of you may know, I talk about it when I've been on television and on radio. But my father, I feel like, epitomizes what I hope everybody in the world does right now. My father was 13 when the Nazis invaded Poland. And my father literally saw the planes coming above and had to was telling his father, oh gosh, isn't it interesting that the Polish Air Force is doing exercises today? And his father said, no, 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 that's not <laughs> the Polish Air Force. They're coming from that direction. It's the Germans. And my father literally saw the beginning of World War II and was literally fighting for everything he had. My father, at the age of 13, was writing on the ghetto walls. Think about this. He grew up about 100 yards from the Warsaw Ghetto. And my father was writing, Hitler is a blank. And people don't realize, as all of you in the room do, that was a death sentence had they caught even a 13-year-old writing it. The Germans would come over, cover it. The next day, my father would write something worse. Then my father started to bring guns and food into the ghetto. And all of you know what an unbelievable, thank you. Thank you. You know what an unbelievable sacrifice that is. And my father then fought in the Warsaw Uprising, which took place after the ghetto uprising. My father, thank you, thank you. I'm very, I, I, I haven't talked about it in a while, but I'm very emotional when I think about what my father went through. My father literally lost 90% of his unit. And he remembers the first person who he was really close to who was a journalist, ironically, who was taken to a place called Auschwitz. And he came back basically a vegetable. And it was clearly a message from the Germans, don't speak about what we're doing, don't talk about what we're doing. And then my father had many of his comrades taken to Auschwitz and perish, as you know. Friends who were Catholic, friends who were Jewish. And so my father decided to fight in the Warsaw Uprising. He didn't have to. He had family, very wealthy family, actually in Switzerland. And he said, I am staying and fighting. And my father became a full-blown fighter. He escaped through the sewers of Warsaw, literally with the shirt on his back. Then he was hit by a mortar shell. And my father was ultimately taken prisoner. And he was taken to Stalag 4B in Molberg, Germany. My father then escaped at 90 pounds and six feet tall. He was one of the more healthy guys. And my favorite part of my dad's story, which he shared with me soon before he passed, he was in the woods for two and a half days and a plane came by. He is with 60 surviving Poles. Many of the people were recaptured and executed. There was no gray, as you know, if you're an escaped POW and you're in Germany and it's World War II. Plane came by, my father, they dove for the ditches when they saw this plane. Something was thrown out and they didn't know what it was. They thought maybe it's a grenade, it's the end of the line. Then the plane came by again and my father looked up and he saw what was the greatest sight in the world. 
he saw a star and he realized it's an American plane. And what was thrown out was not a grenade, but what was thrown out was a chocolate bar sent from the American pilot. And it was a note wrapped around a chocolate bar with a red ribbon. And the note said, welcome, you are safe to walk now during daytime. There are no troops between you and our American lines. You have 15 miles to walk and you are free. Oh, thank you. So my father, a starving prisoner of war, like many of your family members, my father came to a riverbed and thought what was a mirage basically, it was American GIs, my father's Polish, and all he could say was thank you. But he knew it meant freedom. And that's why my father came to this incredible great country called America and was grateful every day till his last breath. I'll share with you just very briefly something I have not talked about publicly, but I just learned recently that when you learn these values, my father clearly didn't just wake up and have them. He learned them from somewhere. As you all know, the values passed on to families and, and taught generation to generation. And we just recently discovered that some of the most wanted Jews in the world were hiding in my grandparents' house. My parents were hiding, my grandparents were hiding them while my father was a prisoner of war. And the house still stands. So I say to you tonight that I am always with you. I love what the Israel Heritage Foundation stands for. I love what you believe in. I love your fight against anti-Semitism. We need to do it more and more. Not just people of the Jewish faith, but people like my father and people around the world. Good people have to band together to stand up and do the right thing. I am so proud to always speak on behalf of the incredible people of Israel. I've had the honor of going over there. I've interviewed, I interviewed Arafat many times, as many of you know. I interviewed Ariel Sharon. I've interviewed Netanyahu, Shimon Perez, many of them. And every time I go to Israel, I have tears in my eyes and I feel like it is home. I'm honored to be here tonight with you and will always stand with you on air and off air. And I love you. Keep up the amazing, amazing work. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.